Okay, here we're going to talk about the derivative of the inverse sine function. Um, it's just going to be a quick derivation in this video. I've got a video about the, uh, the derivative of the inverse, um, inverse tangent function. You may look at that one first because I kind of, you know, discuss some more of the ideas. And I'll rehash some of them here too, but um, probably won't go into all the detail that I do in that video just because there's no point in reinventing the wheel here. So... Okay, so suppose we've got the function y equals inverse sine of x. So again, what, we, what we're looking for, we want the derivative, or um, we can write that as dy over dx. So y prime or dy over dx, that's what we're looking for, just the derivative. So I'm going to start off by thinking about the graph of both um, inverse sine and to get inverse sine, I always think about sine first. So let's see, recall that to make our function one-to-one, -one, we define sine on the interval from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Recall that sine at 0 is 0. At pi over 2, it's equal to 1. And at negative pi over 2, it's equal to negative 1. So there's y equals sine x. And again, I know I've got y equals inverse sine x up here, so don't get those confused. Just think about this as a little aside, a little, a little um, comment off to the side that'll help us think about some things here in a second, make some sense out of stuff. Okay, well, the only reason why I'm graphing y equals sine x is because I want the graph of inverse sine x. So recall you switch the domain and range. So now the domain will be from negative 1 to positive 1 and the range will be from pi over 2 to negative pi over 2. And then the graph looks something roughly like that. So there's y equals inverse sine x. Okay, so we'll come back to this in just a second. I want to talk about that because eventually we're going to, if you've seen the first one, we're going to use an identity and some implicit differentiation to find the derivative. So assuming that the uh, inverse sine x is differentiable, and it is because sine of x is differentiable. The first thing we can do, um, the first thing that we can start off doing is we can apply sine to both sides. So I have sine of y on the left, and then I've got sine of inverse sine on the right. Well, we're just left with sine of y on the left, and on the right, those functions will cancel each other out, and we're just left with x. And now we're going to use implicit differentiation. So, well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So the derivative of sine y will be cosine y. But we have to include our dy over dx. And the derivative of x is just 1. Okay, so again, we're trying to solve for dy dx. That's what we said back here at the beginning. So let's just divide both sides by cosine of y. And our original you know, function, we've got y equals inverse sine of x. Our original function is in terms of x. Well, my derivative now is in terms of y. I'm going to get it back so that it's, again, in terms of x. So I'm going to use the fact that sine of y equals x. And I'm just going to use a trig identity. So we've got that cosine squared of y plus sine squared of y equals 1. Well, I'm going to solve for cosine of y. And to start, I'm going to subtract sine squared from both sides. So I'll have cosine squared of y equals 1 minus sine squared y. Now, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when we do that, we have to include a positive and negative on... In general, if we solve an equation, we include a positive or negative. But let's think about this positive or negative for a second. What do we really need? So I'm going to have cosine of y on the left. I've got this square root 1 minus sine squared y. So again, do I want a positive or a negative? Okay, so do I want a positive or a negative? Well, if you think about our function y equals inverse sine x, because that's what we're working on. And then, well, we took sine of both sides, and we got sine of y equals x. Again, we're interested in our cosine function here. So... Recall that when we, when we had this graph, um, x equals sine of y, our y values are going to be between 
positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay, so we have y equals inverse sine of x. y is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Well, when I take the sign of both sides again, we still have that restriction that y is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. Well, in that case, think about cosine. If you think about the unit circle between negative pi over 2 and, um, excuse me, <laughs> positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. I was graphing it like an x and y axis. So on the unit circle, for the angles between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, cosine of y is going to be um, strictly greater than or equal to 0. So we want to use the positive values. So in this case, when we think about positive or negative, which one do we want? Well, we want cosine of y to be the positive one. And again, because when we had y equals inverse sine of x, the range, the y values were, were between negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So sine of y equals x, again, we said our y values are between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So when we relate cosine of y on the interval negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 on the unit circle, cosine, again, is strictly positive. So, all right, we're done now. All we have to do is substitute that in. dy over dx equals 1 over. We said cosine of y is going to be 1 minus sine squared of y. Well, sine of y, we said that's the same thing as x, so we can substitute that in as well. And we'll have that dy over dx equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we've now got our derivative formula back in terms of x.